we're making our way through these six Swiss rounds here before we cut to the top eight. Both of these players, eh, kind of teammates, I would say. They're Power Nine shirts. A store in yeah, the no, Madison we, area, I believe. Yeah, it's, yep. yep. It's an online store. Very nice. Well, both very successful Magic players, both having a great year, and we are underway here in game number one. It stands up Citadel is where Neil will start. It's a swap and a thoughts he's here from Lewis. Get an idea of what Neil is working with. You'll find a Den Protector, Nana Fenza, among a couple of lands. Also, a Valor stance and a Siege Rhino here for Steven. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him just go for Siege Rhino. Because this shapes them in a lot of ways to be a mid-range mirror where they're just going to play creatures at each other, the thing Avzan has going for it that Red Black does not is that it gets to play Siege Rhino. It's a card of a quality that, that none of Red Black Dragon's cards are. Well, Lewis is going to take a look at the hand and also take a look at his own. We'll see if he does want to select here. Aaron Lewis, multiple GP top eights for him. Some success, some success, excuse me, on the Open Series as well. And he's having a great tournament here this weekend. Looks like he's going to go with Anafenza. Well, that gets rid of the first creature play for Steven. This is a matchup where Steven would be very hesitant to just play Den Protector on turn three. Fleece main line the draw here for Neil. Pretty perfect draw for Steven, yeah. though. Just deciding what land he wants to play it off of, if it will be Case of Coilos or a Windswept Heath. Looks like he's going to go with the Heath. They're going to go down to 19. Forester planes on the way. Yeah, no real reason not to play it off the Heath there. You're going to have to crack this fetch land at some point, provided he already knows what basic he's going to want for the, for the rest of the game. It's the right way to sequence his mana. And there's Fleece Main Lion. So he'll get out ahead here. Aaron had the thought, so he's now, he does have ways that can deal with this card, like Bio Blight and Draconic, or I don't know if he has one in his hand. It looks like he doesn't, which is both Hanger Back Walker. That'll be for one before passing the turn back over to Neil. Neil picks up another copy of Windswept Heath for the turn. There's Caves of Coilos. Here's an attack. Lou is predictably going to take the three. The follow up here for Neil is a Morph Den Protector. And this is where Abzan really excels, that because it's, a, it's green and white, where Red Black Dragons isn't, its creatures are just pound for pound going to be bigger. We'll force Aaron to be off to keep up on kill spells. Aaron does have land number three. In a bind here, he's got Rabble Master and Hero's Downfall on three mana. Also, wishes he could pump Hanger Back Walker, but that would take his whole turn, so I, I doubt he can make that play. Not to mention, Steven has a Siege Rhino in waiting. Looks like Lewis just kind of passed the turn back with Hero's Downfall at the ready. And of course, the potential to pump Hanger Back Walker. Wingmate rock the draw here for Neil. Right. So, by keeping Heroes, by not playing Hero's Downfall main phase, what this allows is that Aaron, Steven cannot attack with the Den Protector. If he does, Aaron will just block and pump Hanger Back. Oh, here comes Lewis, me. That should get the hero's downfall from Aaron. Yeah, I'm curious if he wants to use it here or not, because he does know that Steven has a Siege Rhino in his hand. So right. he might so be he could willing take to take three, the three and then down, downfall the Rhino. Yeah, he's going to take the three points of damage here, save the hero's downfall for the potential Rhino that's coming. There's one swept teeth. Yeah. He'll go down to 18. It's easier for him to top deck an answer to the lion than it is to top deck one to Siege Rhino. Even if the Fleece Main Lion becomes monstrous, remember Aaron does play cards like Foul Tongue Invocation so he can still get it off the board. And there is the Rhino. We also can't forget, too, that a Valor Stance is a known card in Neil's hand, so downfalling there would get that spell countered, basically. So Aaron's going to have to play something. He's going to go to eight. It's just, Abzan's curving out a little too well right this game for Aaron to keep up. Steven's picked up a wingmate rock, which if he gets an untapped mana, he'll be able to raid. Aaron's stuck on three lands at the moment. Even if he hits the fourth land, uh, he's just paying too much of a price right now. Yeah, it's pretty important right now, this turn, for Aaron to hit a fourth land and have it be a second red source so he can play Thunderbreak Regent, and that can help to stabilize some things. 
it's not pretty again because he knows that his opponent has Valor Stance in hand, but it's better than nothing. You know, yeah. he's he's got to get something going. Steven's creatures, especially the low end creatures, are just so much bigger than Aaron's. Yeah, that flees main line was just a very important draw to get the ball rolling. Goblin Rabble match the draw, not particularly helpful right now. He's got a cast. Not it. at all. Yeah. Goblin will attack into Den Protector. Den Protector will block very quickly. And back over to Stephen Neal. We're going to go Valor Stance, Wingmate, Rock in Hand, take a draw step, pick up a copy of Urborg. Uh, hitting just all cylinders, Stephen, hitting that untapped land right there was excellent for him. There's land five. You can consult the graveyard briefly because he has Den Protector on the battlefield, but I think that this one's fairly straightforward. You get to attack the Fleece Main Lion, get to threaten Monstrosity, a predictable block, and now you get to play Wingmate Rock that's been raided. Steven making it look easy. Yeah. Another bird will join. And Lewis, this will probably be his last draw step of this game. Picked up a copy of Sarkin, and that's going to do it. So Stephen Neal will win game number one here over Aaron Lewis. Hobbs on aggro up a game over Red Black Dragons. As now we turn our attention to the sideboard, and we will start with Aaron Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> and what does he have Just for his Red Black Dragon got stuff? Got drubbed here. All right. Well, what he has is he, he go, I imagine he goes heavier on the removal. One of the ways he can keep pace with Steven's early drops is to have some more early drop removal of his own. So he has two copies of Self-Inflicted Wound in the sideboard, which should be pretty useful here. He even can go up to four Foul Tongue Invocations, which is not terrible, though Obzonego does play Hangerback Walker, so that makes that riskier. Uh, he has a Crux of Fate in his sideboard that he can use, as well as a Bioblight and a Magma Spray. On the other side of things here for Steven, that's about the third time we've taken a look at his sideboard. He's having a great tournament, so we've seen him quite a few times on camera. Two Elspeth Sons Champion, two Ultimate Price, two Tragic Arrogance, two Herald of Torment, four cops of Thoughtseize, two cops of Duress, and a Self-Inflicted Wound. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go towards something like Elspeth Sons Champion. As, as Aaron turns into a more removal-heavy deck, Steven's going to have to adapt to that by playing cards that are higher-powered so that when Aaron doesn't have a removal spell for one of them, that that one leftover creature can go or threat can go the distance so else that's a lot better there um even herald of torment is pretty reasonable against a red black deck well those are the options there for both players and we'll have aaron lewis on the play both players sideboarding pretty quickly so perhaps they've played this matchup before as they are relatively good friends as we get ready here for game number two We'll talk about the Season 4 schedule here on the Open Series, where we started things off with the Modern Open Series in Cincinnati. Todd Anderson got the W there. Standard Open Series was won by Esper Dragons, and now we're here in Milwaukee, where we're kind of champions soon enough. We'll take a break for the Battle for Zendikar pre-release, and then Indianapolis is where Battle for Zendikar will debut. After that, we're going to Atlanta for some standard action, St. Louis for some legacy. Modern in Dallas, Halloween weekend, and then Standard in Philadelphia. And then, of course, we've got that Grand Prix in Atlanta, starcitygames.com slash GP Atlanta for more information about that tournament. We'll go to Kansas City for some standard action, New Jersey for some legacy, and then Denver for the first time in about three years for some standard before we do the big two of Season 4. That'll be our Season 4 Invitational, where we'll have standard modern action with a standard open series, where Cedric, that's me, Matthias, that's you, and Patrick, we'll try to, be we'll try to behave ourselves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're good, so we'll try to behave ourselves in Las Vegas. Before we do, the Players' Championship in Roanoke, Virginia, December 19th and the 20th. Me, you, and Patrick one more time, where we're going to see if Brad Nelson can defend the title, or maybe a newcomer like Jacob Wilson or Arleon Trazi can snag the title away from Big Brad. That tournament's going to be something else. Yeah, I mean, we're building for the Players' Championship. We know half, just under half the field at this point, you know, and that's what this this player of the year race really has been about in the, in the standings we've been talking about all the time. You know, your Joe Lissette's trying to get that spot for the Players' Championship at the end of the year. Of course, with all of our main events here during Season 4, we do have that exclusive play mat. It's Hoppin' Rabbit Master. We have seen these be very successful, and we're glad that you guys enjoy them. Tassiper, the Golden Paw, certainly the most popular of the bunch, but Hoppin' Rabbit Master, the Goblin Rabble Master pun, going to give it a run for its money. He's on it for a main event. You get it. It's simple. No strings attached. Sign up. Come and get it. No mailing after the fact. And it's available to all Open Series competitors until December 5th. And that's our show in Denver. That puts a close on season number four as far as individual events and open events are concerned. So we get ready here for game number two between Stephen Neal and Aaron Lewis. Two Madison guys both making a deep run. Madison, really a hub for magic. And I think that, you know, there's a Grand Prix coming up there. Three weeks. And I wouldn't be surprised to see one of these Madison guys win it. You know, they it, it's funny because, you know, when you think of kind of hubs for Magic, you kind of think of Florida, 
You think of the Northeast of Boston, New York area, and you think of kind of California. Yeah, well, telling you, in the center of the country, Madison is certainly has that same reputation. Yep. It is really, really a great place for magic, and it has been for a really long time. I think it's it's funny to me because now it's just now it's just being brought to light. But you know, Sam Black kind of carrying that flag along with his roommate Justin Cohen, Adrian Sullivan, Brian Kowal, Mike Ron from many years ago. Yeah, and I think what, what, there's a bunch of players which you haven't heard of, which you know you see. Okay, you know, there's uh, Stephen Neal, Aaron Lewis, Matt Severa. These players, uh, not the biggest names, but then they'll show up and, and post these great results at tournaments. Jasper, part of that crew as well. Absolutely. Dan Chiquetti, too, Grand Prix champion this year. Neil will start off with a Temple of Silence. You saw Aaron Lewis start off with a Temple of Malice as we're underway here in game number two. Lewis to draw this turn with a Thunderbreak region. He has land number two in Bloodstained Mire. I'll pass the turn back over to Neil. Neil with the Sansep Citadel is the draw. It's a Temple of Malady here for Steven, so he'll take a look at the top card. It looks like that's going to stay on top before going back Aaron's way. Now, Aaron actually has something that we haven't seen in a really long time, which is a third land, a Goblin Rabble Master, <laughs> on an empty board. Still good. It's rare that he'll, he would have gotten an empty board like this to play on against Obs on Aggro. But that's going to be great. Uh, most of Obs on's kill spells will take Steven's entire turn, if he even has one. Kind of the last we'll see of Rabble Master, remember, he rotates out after this tournament. Yep. You take a look at Lewis's hand, it's very expensive. He's got a lot of fours after Rebel Master. He has an outpost siege, a Chandra, a couple of copies of Thunderbreak region. So he really needs to draw a land next turn to get going, preferably untapped. But for now, he's got a goblin, he's got a goblin Rabble Master, and it's a good start here. Sansep Citadel, I'm just gonna pass the turn back. It's been a long time since we've seen Rabble Master just run away with a game. Now the fourth land was not drawn there for Lewis. It was a foul telling invocation, so he's gonna rely on Rabble Master a little bit. <laughs> well, Stu doesn't have the kill spell, that'll be just fine. Here yep. comes six damage. And it's, it's good that Steven didn't, because if Steven had put up some resistance here, Aaron would be in a world of trouble. Jamoka's command the draw. Now Neil's bottlenecked on Lance a little bit. Well, well he, he does have a Citadel, yeah. pardon me. He has a Citadel and a Hero's Downfall, so he can parry for a while. It'd be interesting to see if he goes for Downfall or Anna Fenza. My, my guess is he just has to go to Downfall. It's likely that Aaron has a kill spell, and it's so devastating if Steven doesn't get Rabble Master off the board. Yeah, I think he just has a Hero's Downfall here. Don't get too cute. You can beat those two tokens. Thunderbreak breaches the draw here for Lewis. <laughs> Both nice. Lewis's hand not playing at all here. Yeah, a little bit of an awkward game here. Hero's downfall going to take care of the Rabble Master. The Gobbles will come across for two. It does turn on the murderous cut in Aaron's hand now that there's two cards in the yard. So he has cut and Foul Tongue Invocation. But you're right. Uh, multiple Thunderbreak regions, three of them, I believe. Outpost Siege, Chandra. Well, Siege Rhino's going to come in. But Aaron's got the answer for that with Foul Tongue Invocation to reveal one of those Thunderbreak regions to gain that life back, and then some. Now, is it land number four here for the Grand Prix champion? It is. How about that? Now, I couldn't crack it faster. He's in business. Took him long enough. Yeah, it may, and in this matchup, it may just be a parade of Thunderbreak regions. Yeah. You want to be in the skies, and it also punishes Stephen for killing him. I love his positioning now that he finally found that land. Right, I doubt he'll ever have time to get to that Chandra, for example. Yeah, three Thunderbreak regions. There's region number one. Goblins attack for two. Kneel down to 12. I mean, remember, once two of them get into play, Steven just doesn't have the option of killing them anymore. Uh, take six damage when a dragon is targeted. With Steven at 12, that's, that's a non-starter. He can always see Drino his way out of it. He has a second one. He would need a lot more than just a second one. Maybe two or three more. There is a Rhino. If he can raid it, he has Wingmate Rock waiting. Steven has a good hand. I believe multiple Wingmate Rocks. Mm -hmm. Aaron's careful, and I like this. The way Wingmate, because Wingmate Rock is the way that Steven could lose here, or rather that Aaron could lose here, takes a break off, turn off from playing Thunderbreak Regions to keep Steven's board empty of creatures, and that's really important. Yeah, you get to keep attacking. Has Murderers cut at the ready to at one mana right. here. So yeah, he can end step a kill spell, play a Regent. 
You mentioned Wingmate Rock, two of them right now in Stephen Neal's hand, but rating that's going to be real hard for him to do this game. Here's Anna Fenza. The plan here, of course, Anna Fenza plus Jermilka's command. Murder's cut here from Aaron Lewis. He'll delve away four cards. Neil will have a response with Jermilka's command. He'll be able to get a little bit of stuff off of the board. Looks like he'll probably, I imagine he'll go after the Regent, but he's still in a world of trouble. It was in response to Murder's cut, so Steven takes three. The trade ends up being a two for two. Steven down to six. And so many more Thunderbreak regions waiting for Aaron. And that's the mighty Bloodfell Caves. Oh, gain of life. Yeah, deck plays three of them. Yeah. And now here's Thunderbreak region again. Neil will draw. Yeah, he's going to concede the game. We met Rock's not going to be able to save him. So Aaron Lewis is going to tie things up here against Stephen Neal. It's one to one as we get ready here for game number three between these two players. Good prioritization from Aaron Lewis, realizing that one of the ways he can lose this game is by getting Wingmate rocked out. So every time Steven landed a creature and Aaron had a decision between playing his own threat and playing a kill spell, you saw him prioritize the kill spell each time there. And because of that, it did leave Steven with two Wingmate rocks in his hand at the end of the game. Well, these players are going to shuffle up and sideboard here for game number three. Steven Neal will be on the play this go around. We'll see if they continue to have mana issues as we've seen in the first two games. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about Grand Prix Atlanta, a place I expect to see both of these players. Aaron Lewis, a limited Grand Prix champion at Grand Prix Las Vegas earlier this year. And then Steven Neal, a Pro Tour Top 8 competitor at Magic Origins. And he had to put together a good limited record to do that. So Battle for Zendikar Sealed will be the format. However, we got a real commander feel to Grand Prix Atlanta this coming tournament, November 13th through the 15th, where Benny Smith, MJ Scott, the Commander versus team and the Godfather of Commander himself, Sheldon Menry, will all be in attendance. There'll be some fun meet and greets, some Commander seminars, and then some Battle for Zendikar Limited play as well. StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta is where you can find all the information about that tournament, trying something new for this particular Grand Prix, but we hope to see you guys there regardless. Hashtag GP Atlanta for all your social media concerns. And we'll see you November 13th through the 15th I know Patrick Sullivan and I will be there doing coverage on the week, and I think Matthias, as long as work permits. I'm, as long as work permits, I'm open to battle. Yeah, he's looking to battle, and we're going to have a lot of people because it's Star City Run Grand Prix. You guys know there will be a big attendance. We're going to blow it out of the water for you. StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta for more information for all the things we're doing November 13th through the 15th. For now, we turn our attention to game number three here of round 12 between Stephen Neal and Aaron Lewis. Two very accomplished Madison Magic players. And wouldn't be surprised to see Aaron Lewis work his way towards his first PT Top 8. He's done a lot of winning, really under the radar. Not a big name, not a big personality, pretty quiet guy. Yeah, very quiet. Uh, played him a fair amount in the local scene, and, and he's strong. Yep. I, you know, low profile, but not deservedly so. Him winning a Grand Prix is really no surprise. If you're from the Madison area or, you know, in the Midwest in Chicago, Minneapolis, what have you, he's someone you're going to see on the PTQ scene, the Grand Prix scene. And he is oftentimes winning. And to win a tournament like Grand Prix Las Vegas with all those people, that's, that's not easy. No, I mean, <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do. Both players from the region, Aaron Lewis winning one side, Scott Markison winning the other one. Yeah? yeah. I actually didn't know who the other winner was. Yeah, uh, it's from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Okay. So definitely someone you know. Well, what is it? The finals were Scott and three Madison players. If you looked at the I do finals. remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, which was completely ridiculous. You know, yeah. the, as, as the story goes with these Madison guys, you know, even though we don't do a lot of limited here on the Open Series, these guys love booster draft and sealed and all that stuff. It's definitely that part. This area is definitely limited centric. Yeah, and I know that when a set gets released, Sam Black talks about this a lot. They, they kind of go into like a, like a cave and, tr and just yeah. sit there and just figure out limited for like an entire weekend. There's an entire weekend of drafting. I've ma I make the drive to Madison for Do it you? sometimes. Okay, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've heard stories. I've never been a part of it, but they just draft 11, 12, 13 times for the it's, weekend. Would you have to remember, remember I mean, it's a, so the other champion, you know, in Scott's case, was it was made to Silver Pro last year uh, playing two Pro Tours. Okay, that's just, yeah, wow. Play, playing zero GPs. Made zero. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive, and I'm sure a really good limited record in those Pro Tours. Uh, yes. They figure them out fast. And you know, the, the, the fun thing about the Pro Tours, because they're a split format, is you know, you have to, it, it's hard to be able to do both. 
you know, a lot of the times you see teams that have like a limited expert, like a Ben Stark or a William Huey Jensen, and they kind mm -hmm. of rely on their analysis and expertise, and then the rest of the guys trying to figure out constructed. It, it seems like for the Madison group, it's like, no, we're going to figure out limited, make sure we 5-1 or 6-0 here, and then, you know, Hopefully we'll have a good enough constructive and then, deck. Yeah, hopefully Sam breaks the format. Yeah. And then we all get to win. You know, yeah, that's, they, that's they, the plan. They, they do the inverse where they have a bunch of people playing limited, <laughs> and then it's like, all right, Sam, do some crazy stuff. Figure something out. And we all know that Sam is great at that. So it's fun to see how the team. If you're going to put it on the shoulders of one player to just break a format, Sam is a good choice. He's going to try. And nothing is off limits for him when it comes to deck building. Nothing. Last, heat, last time we were here in Milwaukee was playing... What is it? The benevolent bodyguard in Legacy, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah. The Legacy aristocrats. Yeah. Given that a he try. Did, he, I believe he finished. He cashed with it. Yeah. You know, because that's a deck in Legacy. Well, for him it is. Here's a duress. Foul Tongue Invocation Heroes downfall are the selections that Steven can make. He cannot take Thunderbreak Region. Then there are three lands there in Bloodfell Caves, Mountain, and Swamp. Yeah, Aaron Lewis on six cards here. He's on the draw though, so both players have the same number of cards. Steven will just get to play his first. So we'll see what Steven does want to select. He'll take the Foul Tongue Invocation. Basically, says that will only punish him if he draws Hangerback Walker. Yep. Temple Silence here for Neil. Take a look at the top card. Going to consult the hand. You see his draw for the turn was a copy of Ultimate Price. Interesting whether Steven wants to be aggressive. My guess is that he's going to have to become grindier too to fight through this removal. He'll be looking for cards like Den Protector. Top card goes to the bottom from the scry. Lewis will draw. Yeah, I'm not sure Steven has a green source in hand. So even if it was a Den Protector, he may have to put it on the bottom. Let's see what he draws now. Hangerback Walker. Well, I mentioned before, it's, it's slightly unfortunate as this would have really protected him against Foul Tongue Invocation. Yeah, but what he is missing is a green source of mana. And a Fenza, a couple copies of Siege Rhino in hand. Draconic Roar here for Lewis. Just going to pass the turn back. Neil will draw. Picked up another copy of Ultimate Price. No green mana, but two removal spells that he can cast. He can pump. So, it, I mean, he'll need a green mana to win the game. It's not great. But in the meantime, it's not that, like, Steven is doing nothing. Uh, he has some kill spells. He can keep pumping this hangar back walker. Lewis will just draw. <laughs> Self-inflicted wound. Ironically, self-inflicted wound is a good edict against Hangerback Walker because it gets around it. Yeah, this is it, it, it's weird. Hangerback Walker activation. Draconic War is going to take care of that. Reveal the Thunderbreak Regent. And once again, look at this prioritization of removal from Aaron. He could have just played Thunderbreak Break Regent that turn. Instead, took an entire turn off to just Draconic Roar. Urborg the draw. Nice. I, I'm a little surprised, actually, if that was the play he was going to make, that on turn three, he didn't just end step the Draconic War at the hangar back wall. And then play Thunderbreak Reach the next turn. Yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, if Steven has something like a Valorous Stance that could blow it out, if Steven had green mana available, I also think that's the wrong play because he could Obs on Charm, perhaps, and then get m multiple Thopters, but none of those were available. Thunderbreak Reach is going to die to ultimate price. Neil will take three. Let's see if Steven Neil can draw green mana. And this is this, the, the taxing thing that Red Black does. Every time Steven's killed something, he sees he's just at 13. Mm -hmm. But smile on Steven's face. He drew a green mana source. He's going down to 12, and I think he's going up to 16, or excuse me, up to 15 from Siege Rhino. Oh, that's possible. I think it's a, I think it's a great place to great. start. Yeah, I'll say that. It, you, can, you can never go wrong with casting Siege Rhino. Might go Anafensa, though. Nah, uh, let's, do, let's do the big guy. Yeah. Especially against a red-black deck, this is your best card. Rumor has it even you do this now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, the, dis the, the disappointment in your voice. It's, it's really unexpected. I like it, actually. Even Matthias Yeah, but sometimes I put Dig Through Time in the same deck as him, at least. Okay, stretching the mana. Yeah. There's a self-inflicted wound. That'll take care of the Siege Rhino. If they make the green derping card good enough, yeah, we all have to play it. You just don't have to be happy about it. That's true. Everyone gives in eventually. Neil will draw. Picked up a copy of Temple of Malady. He'll scry. We'll see where that top card will go. It's staying on top very quickly. In for one with the Thopter. Lewis will fall down to 16. One thing to note here for Aaron, his draw last turn was Crux of Fate. 
and he would really like Steven to really extend into this board. Yeah, I mean, Crux of Fate's good because it's one of the few cards he has that answers things like Ringmate Rock. What Aaron doesn't have right now is he has no threat of his own. Yeah, Draconic Roar doesn't help. Just has to pass the turn back. It's his, his all-kill spell deck here. We'll keep the board clean. Rui's definitely getting into a grindier game. What Aaron has to worry about is cards like Siege Rhino that tax just by virtue of being cast, yep. and cards like Den Protector. Well, is it time to catch Crux and Fade is the question. Urborg the draw here for Lewis. It probably has to be. You can't take a free hit off Siege Rhino. Yep. So here is Crux. Neil's hand right now, Jeroka's command and ultimate price. So both players sitting on kill spells, no threats. And, but what a draw for Steven. Ay, ay, ay. Elspeth. This just got real hard. Aaron would need a downfall immediately. He doesn't have one. He's got about one turn to find it. Yeah. His draw, oof. Self-inflicted wound, huh? Not exactly that's what the not, Yeah. Would. And that's the danger, is that when we get into these removal spell wars, you would think that the, con like, Opson is better at winning this top, the top deck wars. It has so many more business cards. It has Rhinos, Den Protector. So we see Steven drawing Den Protector now, and you think, how does Aaron even win? Hero's Downfall won't do it. Yeah, I, I, this is, I, I think now this is probably too much for Lewis to overcome. Neil's going to come across for three. Lewis will fall down to nine. Three more soldier tokens to be made by Elspeth. And for you non-Elspeth fans out there, well, this is the last weekend of this. Last weekend of Elspeth. Yeah. Boy, that card has been such a powerhouse. Remember, the, if you go all the way back to the block constructed format of Theros, she was the only card that mattered in a lot of situations. You had decks like Red Green Elspeth top yep. the Pro Tour, which was a Red Green deck splashing Elspeth. Aaron Lewis will draw a mountain. He'll show the Draconic Roar and the self inflicted wound and concede the game. Steven Neal will win this match here over Aaron Lewis, two games to one. Obs on Agro will take care of Red Black Dragons. And it's really the power level of Obs on Agro that really shone through there. Den Protector, Siege Rhino, Elspeth. Super powerful cards continue to get the job done. Yeah, Steven Neal moves up to 10 and 2. He'd like to have 12 wins should be the number to get into top 8. For Aaron Lewis, he's not dead yet, but he's going to have to run the table if he wants to make it into top 8. Well, we come back to